All right, welcome back to CS11. This is lecture number 13. When I want to say just a little bit more about two concepts that relate to functions, scope and references. Scope refers to the visibility of a variable, whether you can access it at any given time, and references are a technique in C++ to connect a variable in one scope to a variable in a different scope. To illustrate these examples, I'm using a sample program from Chapter 5 called account.cpp, which I've recreated here. And you can see that I've compiled and run the program and get the same results that they have in the textbook. Let's start off by talking about these two variables here in main, Harry's account and Sally's account. These two variables here are declared inside of this main function. That makes them what are called local variables, and that means that they exist only in the scope of this function itself and don't exist in this function here. If we tried to refer to either Harry's account or Sally's account up here, we would get an error, and the compiler would say, I don't know what that is. We've previously talked about function calls, and here we're calling a function called withdraw and providing two pieces of information. Those get transmitted up to this function when we call it. And when this function begins, it has its own local variables that are in scope. Now these variables here, we're still in memory because the program is running, but they're not accessible anymore. Variables that are declared inside of this function here are local only inside here. So for example, the variables balance and amount and penalty only exist inside of this function here and can't be referred to down here. Now the example here from the textbook uses a reference variable. This indicated by that ampersand and that one tiny character there causes the way that these variables that interact to change. And instead of balance being a local variable, it instead becomes a reference or a connection to this variable here, Harry's account in this case. This changes the uh, interaction that you would normally have between these functions so that here when we refer to balance it refers us or connects us so that we're actually working with this variable here. Kind of like a forwarding address can take your mail from an old address to your new address. Now it's not maybe immediately clear why we, you would want to do that. And unfortunately, this example in the textbook doesn't really make it clear. Why would you want to do this? What's so great about having a reference parameter? And it's not the fault of the textbook. The fact is that in order to really understand why you might want to have reference parameters requires much more complex programs params that are more complex than anything that we'll do or look at this semester. So this is really a technique to kind of learn about, to know is available, but then it won't be till you take future classes for it to really make sense. For example, this program we could change so it doesn't require references at all. Let's just change the return type to double. We'll change this so it's not a reference parameter anymore. We'll change this so it returns the balance, and we'll change the call so that when you call the function, that the value that gets returned gets reassigned back to the original variable. So in this case, Harry's account, and here Harry's account, and for this last call, Sally's account. And now we've modified this program, so here, it no longer uses references. You'll pass the va value of Harry's account here to balance. Balance will be changed by one of these two values, and then the value is sent back, and then in turn assigned back to the original variable. So this program is an alternate way of accomplishing what the original program did, but without using references. One last thing that I want to mention and here we have this constant, and it's declared here inside of this function. It's a local, and we can improve it slightly there by making it say 10.0 instead of 10, because 10 is an integer, and 10.0 is a double. That makes our param just a little bit easier to read now. And let's cut it 
and I'll paste it here, outside of the scope of a particular function. That makes it what's called a global. So when you put it up here, outside of any of the functions, that makes it a global. And globals are available throughout the whole program. So that means I could refer to it inside of this function or inside of this one. In general, use of global variables is highly discouraged. And in fact, I prohibit it in any of the programs that you're going to write for me. You might occasionally find it useful, though, to declare a global constant. I will allow that if necessary. And that allows this value of penalty to be used throughout the program. For example, in this function, if you wanted to communicate back to the user that a penalty had been applied to the account, you couldn't do that unless this variable was also available in this function, the same way that it's available in here. So, just a tiny word about globals. We're not going to use them in general. You might occasionally find a use to have a global constant, and so that will be allowed. Okay, well, that wraps up a couple of concepts related to functions. Thank you.